open library of, of collaborating ideas, it's also very useful. So sure, let's let's chat, chat as much as you want, but I can, if you get me going, I, I can I can talk all day. <laughs> so it's it's nice right now because you will see. Let's do this experiment to the audience, to the viewers that they are going to see us right now in uh, I don't know, tomorrow <laughs> with my lips. Uh, or maybe you make me some questions in order for you to, to say things that you can read, things that uh, the mouth, what mouth speaks, but not the words this time, what the muscle speaks, what the belief system speaks. But uh, what actually the mouth speaks, Jorge? Well, everything. There is, there is this basic idea that we are, we are built up on upon uh, underneath under underneath the structures. You know, it's realities over realities. So the first thing, and this is a bit rude, but we are a, a digestive tract. As a humans, it's just wrapping the digestive tract like a yes. worm. No, so so the first thing is uh, the mouth has to do a lot with nourishing, and in, the, in that regards, uh, it 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 expresses. When when we hold up things in our in emotional things we hold up to them, they are in the mouth area of our body. So what what we can what we can read from the mouth, it's very primal expressions that are related to that development stage of our of our physicality throughout the ages. It, it goes as deep as that. No, so some signals of the mouth have to be with that basic uh, feeding instrument. So our mouths will, will point uh, in our needs of nourishment, and then we build up the blocks, and this relates to a, a baby fetus who is looking for the mother's uh, breast in order to, to feed, but also in order to feel secure and uh, in contact with something that protects. Uh -huh. The first impulse of a baby is to look for their mother protection. So a lot of that, when we are expressing as an adult, we have certain expression that will relate to that particular development stage of our psychology. So that is the reason why we sometimes, when we uh, tighten our mouths, it's like we're trying to hold it onto something to feel secure. Aye. Some people express it very intensely and some very softly. That depends on the other features of the face and the personality. But nevertheless, it is when you are sometimes uh, faced with a challenging, let's say in sports, no? you, you fix your mouth as well because you are trying to mm. secure yourself to root into something. So it's a primal expression for that. So whenever you see someone doing that kind of expression, He's looking for reassurances yes. in a negotiation, in an early day conversation. You can help that person by giving assurances of that. So you can read those signals and you can use them. For exactly. So proper communication. Another uh, situations, people who people who experience an important definitive moment uh, at that particular stage will signal the, the mouth need to fixate onto something. That's when people develop the need to either chew a pen or their, their nails, or sometimes the oral fixation goes as deep as an, an, as an intense, as an addiction to a, to a cigarette, for to example. smoke, this is my smoke. question. So the cigarette, the addiction to cigarette, it's related from these years of uh, first years of a baby, of their connection with their mother, after all. Exactly. What what we can what we can conclude of someone's behavior with their smoking, it's uh, that something very important happened in that particular stage. At least from the perspective of the of the baby, it might be something as uh, as. Uh, a neutral, like the baby being in the cradle and the mother not paying attention, and the baby will need that uh, connection to feel secure because we haven't detached our sense of identity from our mother. We still believe we are bonded and we are one. We are the baby, one. 
the baby progressively uh, develops the awareness of being an individual. So for a baby, it's very complex when it finds in a challenging situation to manage. And when something strong happens and it's not resolved, the, the mouth will point out that particular situation in that particular stage in their lives. Just a question. So uh, I think that, yes, you're right, but that you say that the baby believes that there's one connection with the mother. Maybe I think around, if I remember correct, around the month, of eight, then slowly, slowly, the awareness of the baby is starting to separate from the mother around this month. Exactly, that, that begins to happen when the baby uh, begins to have more autonomy on their bodies. So mm. they will start to, to explore the surroundings. It's very hard for them because they can barely keep their physical body straight, but nevertheless, they are beginning to sense themselves as individuals. So yes, uh, eight, eight months, it depends on how strong the baby is and starts to- Starting to- To move. So that will give him the, the first uh, psychological of structures of independence. Nevertheless, there's still this bond with the mother orally. Oral, yes. It depends also, there are mothers who, they allow their kids, they breastfeed their kids up to, uh, a year and a half, no? very, very lengthy for us. There are some babies and some mothers cut off the breast at eight months of age. It will depend on the bond with the mother and the baby, definitely. That's really beautiful. I like it because also through the body language, because this is a body language uh, lens, let's say using now our body language lenses. <laughs> yes, when also we see what we teach, and we see the lips pressed together, that is a sign that something is going on underneath. And this person, either they are not expressing fully themselves, they want to speak and they are keeping it behind, or they have, it depends then of the other facial part, there is a little bit anger. And of course, behind anger, there is some fear, so on and so forth. So there is another layers and layers underneath. It is just like, Maybe you've seen that there are people who have uh, some uh, marks in, uh, in the yes. upper lip because they are constantly pressing it. And that is another signal. This goes a bit more complex because you have, uh, there is a possibility of relate archetypical psychology traits to the person. So when a person is in a certain archetype, the features will be very precise. We have observed in our in our retreats that uh, people who have these uh, muscle marks, these yes. expression marks, are people who, when they were kids, they were neglected by their parents, and they had to make an effort to keep themselves shut oh. in order not to make conflict. So they tighten their mouths very much in the early ages. Oh. And when people grow old and the skin starts to be more... It makes so, more obvious yes. the, the features of the face. You will see people with these uh, these marks. You can see that that person, when when he or she was a, a little boy, little girl, she had to repress a lot her expression, and that's maybe because uh, one parent, their mother or father, uh, were a bit authoritative and they wouldn't allow the kid to speak. So. There is also a consequence of that because when kids, they cannot speak properly because they have to be, they are repressed or auto repressed. What they do is that they start to, to compensate with a world of, of ideas and you know, an ethereal world, it's a, an escape which signals to the Peter Pan, they had to another world because they yes. needed to escape from something in this present world. So that's how you can see from uh, physical features, how the, the mind constructs the structures from which is going to operate the, in this uh, material world. I love this. So creative, there is a percentage of the most creative people on planet earth to have faced in their young age um, this, uh, let's say, um, sentimental, emotional 
the press. In, in a sense, the structures are there. There's another. There are many other things playing on the on the psychological development, but. You can say that the conditions are there for people to be their imagination and they are not very focused in the here and now. It can play both ways, you know, it's a, it's a psychological treat. How it develops, it depends oh. on many circumstances. Uh, how so what, what I do with this work is that I have to, or more, more the better than my clients, they join the dots from their own reality because that's the exploration they do with when we work. Uh, the idea of uh, observing all these signals from a client's perspective, is to make sense of whatever is being presented from their internal mind, you know, the unconscious. And once they uh, create this round of information and join the dots, then the conscious awareness uh, uh, brings understanding of a particular stage of their lives or a particular pattern in which uh, we seldom get stuck in our lives. No? We, we develop throughout patterns, a pattern of relations, a pattern of behavior. So by helping a person to join these dots with the signals, body language and starting and some other expressions, resolution comes and people can, can move on with a, with a better inner self, more, uh, more uh, emotionally balanced, more clear on how the life is uh, happening in order to make proper decisions. And so by this, we can break the patterns that are not beneficial for us. By this, by recognizing the patterns, we are in position to break the patterns. How do we break a pattern of a relationship? Like, let's say, for example, uh, a person is difficult uh, to find the proper mate or uh, they have or they are all the time they're repeating to choose the same type of uh, mate well first let's understand that uh, these patterns uh, are consequence of uh, traumatic events and by trauma it does not necessarily have to be something very dramatic because we are related. It's a very heavy word, no? it's too loaded, but not necessarily it has to be like that. Uh, a mislearning can be something that is uh, traumatic in a way. So we are a combination of different uh, experiences. When we happen to experience a particular situation, it's very important to understand what happened in that particular situation the pattern is a consequence of it. There are two possible ways of the pattern to be built, whether it's a, an experience uh, remembered in time and space, located in a time and space memory, uh, yes. a left side of the brain trauma, considering we have right brain and left brain, or it can be a right brain uh, experience, which will create a different manifestation of the pattern. One pattern can be in a, in a repetitive uh, experiences, like uh, repeating the kind of uh, relations we might find, no? the same kind of partners, no? even the same physicality, yes. because it happens. Yes. Uh, what we need to first do is to explore what that pattern is showing up in, in terms of signals and try to go to the root causes of, the, of that particular pattern and break the pattern and that can be in two different ways. One can be by uh, telling the story as many times as possible in order to escape. It's just like the hamster and the wheel. No? You are like a hamster just going around and around. In order for the hamster to escape that wheel, it has to attain escape velocity, even faster and faster and faster and faster until it kind of uh, gets uh, blasted away. Like, yes. boom, boom. So that's actually, and that's the one of the processes I deliver in my retreat. So you can have, you have to write the story of your relationships as many times as possible in order for you to understand why, what is the nature of the pattern. That could be one way to approach the resolution. And the other one is by drawing. By drawing, you, you place in the paper those patterns of uh, unconscious signals that we are uh, showing to the world. 
And that is when you draw that you have the whole picture and then the resolution comes. Uh, depending on the nature of our lives, because there is no, no fixed uh, solution or fixed strategy, it depends on how our life has uh, evolved throughout uh, years. So maybe someone has been very traumatized because the family was Maybe someone was uh, very healthy and had a really with less uh, the impacts in their lives. And nevertheless, it, even, even with two different set of lives, life happens, no? Something happens and it's amazing. So you cannot, you cannot tell. The only way is uh, going inside ourselves and uh, digging in, digging in into whatever happened at any age. I personally work a lot with uh, bird related, uh, bird, uh, bird, uh, everything related with the womb experience. Mm. It's uh, fundamental on how we develop our personality, our set of skills, our emotional structure. So a lot of the work we do is to facilitate people to go as deep as to the womb experience. What happened when we were in our mother's womb? It's yes very, very relevant. The birth experience by nature is traumatic and it's very, very important uh, in relation to many things going on at that stage. The, motion, the emotional conditions of the mother, there are very, very resilient women which can go through a very hard uh, labor and they don't project fear. They are balanced, that's very good. But for another baby, maybe the mother is the first time, very apprehensive, very stressed. That stressor hormones are transmitted to the baby mm -hmm. by the umbilical cord. So the, the, the experience of birth is highly, highly influential in our, in our life. So going to that stage of our development and finding what could happen that uh, define us in a certain pattern it's amazing. The, the results are beautiful. You know, how people change from one day to another, just because they went to the right place in the right time in that yeah. particular stage. Do you know what I like? It's so, it is like now my imagination <laughs> because I have created a lot of big pattern of imagination for myself. As now that you were talking inside me, it's like I'm seeing billions of patterns with colors so we are all pattern and all these amazing beautiful billions of patterns they are coming to an outcome and uh, then we can just like the butterfly as we say we can touch a little bit the butterfly we can change a little bit small part and the patterns will change and uh, it's another personality another uh, dna we may say Actually, we, we have this idea of the, of the mental DNA. There is this, this ancestral DNA that we are carrying from generations to generations, and that was another way of patterns. For me, this work is um, it's exciting because the patterns reveal so many things. You know, the, the humanity in us is revealed in so many ways. It's, it's really moving how people came to to create a, a marvelous uh, experience of life, sometimes very sordid, but also it's very beautiful. Of course, uh, the work we do is particularly uh, delicate because the idea is to help people to heal from their more, the deepest wounds from life, no? And being able to facilitate that journey, it's a very, very challenging, there's nothing as challenging as looking at ourselves as we really are in the mirror. So it's very humbling to, to be part of this journey in which people recognize themselves to the point they can release the patterns they have been trapped into. Uh, life is like that. It's a floret, like the broccoli, you know? It's, uh, yes, yes. it's them and then it just flowers. And uh, it's amazing how the mind organizes. And when you reach the right experience, everything collapses. So many experiences that have been with us that are useless, they demand a lot of uh, psychic energy and that uh, also demands a lot of physical energy. So 
the quality of life, it is massively improved. It's amazing what people can achieve when they find these patterns. It was also very interesting how people emerge naturally into a different self because a lot of things uh, self-regulate. How we relate with people in different, uh, it's difficult to control how to relate, how to relate in different contexts. One of the one of the ideas we hold is that we are kind of a the anti-coach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because coaching is a lot of tools and you cannot control so many tools. It's, yes. it's demanding. <laughs> so something new it is needed. So the best way to control things is just by not controlling anything. Just, just let them go. And then the, an authentic self emerges because there is nothing to move. There is nothing to, to be aware of. You know, mindfulness comes by nature, not by force. And when that happens, it's amazing to see how people can be suddenly aware of, a, let's say, a, a, a different uh, social strategy in a particular context with my boss, with my partner. Suddenly, I behave differently because my mind is aware of different uh, aspects that previously when I was in my, in my past patterns, I couldn't see, you know, it's like a tunnel vision. When yes. that opens, naturally the mind takes the best solution at hand. It's so beautiful. The, the, uh, the intelligence that rules our, our mind will take always the easy by releasing all these patterns our mind naturally takes the best solutions and and it's beautiful to see how i can learn from that so uh, i cannot behave the same in in a different relation in which i was conditioned by a pattern not anymore so i can decide if that relation is still serves a purpose in our lives or in my life and letting go of toxic relations, it's very easy. Understanding certain relations differently because we are bounded to certain relationships, family, our sons. Yes. It's a life's journey, but yes. we can manage that journey in a different way. No? So it's, it's very empowering to see mothers, mothers in order to, they build a different uh, set of uh, traits to, to help their kids and uh, we have we have uh, families that they have decided not to take their kids to school, not school and no school anymore. Ten years ago, we were doing these projects, and the idea is to allow the kids to make decisions by themselves. When you teach a kid to make decisions by themselves, of course, in the context that they need to make decisions. For example, yes. they decide at what time they want to study. So the kid would say, okay, from 11 in the morning to six at the afternoon. And he learns that he has to abide by that decision, otherwise there will be consequences. So when you raise a kid five years of age, ten years of age, make contents that as a mother they have to Fine. and no control at all, the kid uh, grows uh, reliant on his own skills, the kid develops self-confidence, the ab ab ability to manage its own risks, how, how good, by the, by the age 15 years of age, the kid is totally conscious of his own wellness, so he can move on in their lives faster than the regular teenagers. Mm. But this has to be because we keep a clean mind. So maybe that's the essence, no? to have a clean mind. Yes, a clean mind, so beautiful. Uh, it's first time I hear this clean mind and I like it a lot because it's clean from um, uh, traumas or clean from emotional blocking, clean from uh, patterns that are not functional, if uh, you allow me to say this word. My last question to you is, as we have said about the leaves, so in order for me as a body language coach, when I see, for example, a behavior 
that uh, a person is stressed, under stress, and I see these soldiers to be so square and so tense, and the muscles of the face to be so tense. During a stressful situation, before going out to a public speaking, let's uh, use this example of public speaking, then, of course, we use some patterns, some tools to relax, to make the person uh, feel relaxed or to self uh, confidence um, increase, trying by different approaches and tools and exercises to increase the self confidence. But from your point of view, how much, how long it takes for a public speaker that got so much anxiety to work with him or with her in order to find out the pattern that create this anxiety before going in front of an audience and to present and to perform. How long? Of course, it depends on the personality, but from your experience, how long it will take for a person to release himself from this stressful situation? Okay. Uh are you asking just right before uh, the, the presentation or preparing himself because preparing speaker? Okay. because before it's uh, some tools cannot be yes sure the the first thing that we do it, it could take probably one day of uh, of coaching six oh. six hours uh, first i would help the person to to explore from every perspective the the everything he feels or, or she is being felt and, and understood as as the, as as the, their position as a public speaker everything to be downloaded to understand with total clarity what's in, what is the implications of standing in front of a crowd and being able to speak because <clears throat> that would that would feed a, a lot of insight on how that person is being perceived outwardly what is being projected onto that person, and how, how he or she reacts to that projection. Uh, the exploration would also have to uh, give, give that person uh, insights on how their uh, presentation skills are being applied. So that would give him clarity on, on, the, on, the, on the persona that has to portray in a particular presentation. When that happens, the, usually the client has a lot of emotional release because properly embodies a public speaker. If there could be a particular emotion because there is a deeper structure, what I suggest that person is to go inside the physically with, we have this emotion, no? Insecurity, the, the anxiety. What I would do is ask the person to focus on what is inside that in initial that initial feeling in the body. Let's say there is anxiety in the chest. I would ask, what is inside the anxiety in the chest? Maybe someone would say uh, expectation. Mm. And I would ask again, and what is inside expectation? I need to perform right. I would ask. How old is the I that needs to perform right? Usually the person will go to a younger self. Oh, that day in school where I had to present because it was a very important uh, subject and my, my marks were depending on that. Okay, and what was, what was the feeling inside that younger self at that age? Uh, fear of repressal from my parent. And what's inside that? No, I was a little boy, I was afraid. What is inside of the, the being afraid? Loneliness. What's inside loneliness? Not being understood. How old is the I which is not being understood? Five years of age. So if we allow the person to navigate these structures, which are patterns of emotional components, we go to the source of an experience which was very small, very, very young in time, where something happened that created the initial emotional experience in which other emotional experiences are going to stack up. When you get to that point, 
all the other emotions that collapse and their clarity and security arises because that initial seed of fear that was uh, seeded when that person was very young is released. And you can do that exploration with the two, one or two possible emotions that the public speaker would be feeling uh, within the idea of uh, doing that. That will give him massive amount of healing besides being a better presenter because he won't be reacting from that particular aspect of cell that was created at that age. So if, if we follow the crumbs, just like the, like the Hansel and Gretel fairy yes. tale, if yes. we follow the crumbs, if we follow the signals, those signals will take us to a particular situation in time. Uh, the postures as well, no? What's inside that posture? Sometimes I've seen, I've seen people who are a bit uh, tilted to one side and they, they show like an expression from this side of their body yes. and not from this one. And I found that they, they were from a particular position from their parents. They were show, spoken harshly, regularly. So it's a body language from a kid protecting from the intensity of, the, mm -hmm. of what was being jailed or voiced to him when he was a little, a little kid. Amazing. So it's amazing what, what the body tells us. Yes. There's another anecdote. I had a, a nurse was asking, Jorge, I have this situation in which I get sick from everything in my left side of the body. My oh. left lung had been in, uh, with pneumonia very severely affected. I had a problem in my pancreas. Uh, my, my left eye had an infection. It was a pattern. Everything was happening in the left side of her body. And he intuitively, we asked, uh, were you born left-handed that you were forced to turn right? And she was like, how did you know? Because something so, so strongly oh. being manifested in one side of the body it is showing a very important trauma related with the left-right uh, hemispheres operating. So something happened very harshly. What could have happened to, to define this uh, laterality of the brains? She was being forced uh, to turn right-handed instead of left. It's amazing what the body tells us when we see the right, the right kind of signals. So let me ask you this, Jorge. So when we teach about to, to have a strong body posture, the shoulders to be relaxed back, when you are, when you are talking, your head to be stra straight up and just to do more synchronicity with the movements, more synchronicity, synchronicity with your words, with your facial, with your hand gesture, your body gesture, etc. And the legs to be stable, firm when you are in public speaking. On the ground, separated a shoulder's strength, a shoulder, a shoulder sorry, width. So that can, uh, we can reverse, for example, by our choosing our physicality by choosing our body language consciousness, then we can break also the pattern of um, less self-esteem or not so self-confidence, things like that. Can we do the reverse way? There are many, there are many ways to find the golden nuggets and definitely the, 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 post, the postures that we can use to properly speak, they can be a source of, uh, of, of security. Uh, another way of uh, working with body language in that regard is to, to explore different physical postures. Some of them, when we explore them, we will see that we, are, we feel defensive or we feel uh, reduced in our abilities but also we start to, to explore those physicalities which give us stability, a sense of, uh, of security, even power, no? there are powerful stances. Yeah. So what we do is to ask, what do I know from this particular posture? And then I explore the different uh, understandings that I can elicit from a particular posture of security or power compared to a particular posture of, uh, of uh, defense, defensiveness or insecurity. Yeah. By exploring and contrasting both, 
I can I can build up more uh, a resilience, more uh, psychological stamina, and, and certainly that fits a sense a sense of, of security, because then I can see a broader set of uh, of skills which are probably in the back uh, of the of the scenery. Now they are to the front. Yes. So by exploring the different postures, people can understand why is it that they are expressing like that, but they have the option and why is it that it's better. And then you have a you have a set of like again more joints, more more dots to join by exploring the physical postures. So it's not only very useful in terms of public speaking, but it's very enlightening on, on why is it that we, we stand or we behave in a certain ways. And then we turn more aware and then we can manage our, our present state of mind or, or emotional state by being more aware of our physicality. If we change our body posture, my emotions will, will change. Whether it is a negotiation, maybe it's uh, sorting a conflict with my spouse, the physical body will allow me to be more calm or more excited. We know it very well just by breathing. No? If we breathe mm -hmm. deep and slow, we will have more stability of mind, contrasted to have a... A, breathe. a short, a, a short, short breathing. A short breathing. <laughs> yes, so yes, from the upper part, yes. Exactly. We learn from our body when we explore the postures. certainly builds up on our sense of self-confidence. Uh, it all what you have shared with us for here it is like and uh, i like it it's um, magical to explore the human it's uh, so excited because this is we're talking about to love human because if you don't love human you don't want you want to make human to release from the traumas to go and connect with his genuinity and his uh, hair of ethnicity and then it will be a better communication and better results, life results and life balance for sure. And better communication always brings this communication to ourselves, what we communicate to ourselves, what we communicate to others. And um, I like it, Jorge. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's very nice to see so many things like an orchestra playing at the same time, being aware of all that, it's just beautiful. No? It's being, being conscious of in many levels. It works in our advantage and in advantage to others, which I feel it's uh, the spirit of these times, no? to be very much in that, that dimension in which everything works to the, to the best of, for the best of everyone. Yes, and your approach is, holist is an holistic approach. I like it a lot. Because by this, it's not only that you propose to do these one, two, three steps. Of course, this is uh, important to know the steps to follow. But at the same time, parallel, you're going deeper and you connect the dots, as you have said, the emotional dots or the physicality of the body dots or the public speaking dots. It depends on what... Uh, you want to discover because we have many things to discover. Pattern from relationships, pattern with children, patterns with friendship, patterns with colleagues, many patterns because we are all patterns. So by connecting all the dots, you will release, get free from a dysfunctional patterning and you will be ready to go to discover the next pattern and then the next pattern, and then the next. This is the life journey. I love it. It is indeed. It's a. It, it's never. It never stops. And, and never. the emergence of things. It's. It's when life turns magical. You know. It's a. It's a. It's a field of experience with everything. It's connected and works perfectly. Yes. And it's being in this this uh, dimension of of. Uh, well, it's, this is very subjective, of course, because we're touching the, the, the realms of spirituality, but when we can really be aware of that oneness in which everybody one participates, everything is so smooth and, and works very nicely. We, we don't depend on, on conditioning, particularly from conditioning from the world around, mm -hmm. because the patterns are also around. 
the, there is a very interesting pattern now with the present stage we're being faced to to recognize uh, recognize a lot of challenges that we as humans have to deal with no maybe climate change being one of many and that would be at the top but how what kind of pattern got us to this particular situation no this is an interesting yeah. question what what pattern puts us in this challenging situation and what's next and the pattern it has a lot of echoes because it's a pattern within a pattern within a pattern so of course let's not go so back in history we just can go to 50 years ago and uh, after the second world war finished there was an agreement an economical agreement in the Bretton Woods uh, meeting with the presidents of Europe and the United States and what was agreed was an economical model of uh, of con constant growth mm. that is the the, the the ruling model that is building up a consuming yeah. society all these uh, new companies producing so many consuming goods with plastic so it's it's crazy so that is the initial conditions of a pattern that we don't question very much we just navigate and we we carry on with our lives no? so in a sense we have been adoctrinated into living in this particular way the problem is that it's not sustainable we're seeing that in the in terms of how we're polluting the planet how the climate change is changing the working conditions in many countries no because the the production monster has to be keep, keep building uh, we need clarity we need to relieve ourselves and release ourselves from our own limiting patterns and to see the real patterns at play and this will be one of many and mm -hmm. then we have to be clean in order to make the right decisions on how we're going to raise our kids to learn to learn teach them to be more sustainable to build a life using the resources they have not trying to build a life with no with the idea of finding resources that are probably in the other side of the planet no so how we do this how do we teach our kids this new set of beliefs or ideas no? how do we uh, bring conditions from a for a healthy pattern we need clean minds yeah. clean leadership in our house in our business in our working space in our work in our sports team politically mostly no so we have to clean up in order to clean our clean inside in order to clean outside <laughs> look how now you are saying what it came to my mind let me bring this in order to make it um, visual okay we have to be clean let's say that this glass let's put it it's empty it's clean to receive the glass it's ready to receive only if it is empty and clean Yes, so yes. if the, this is let's say the parents the father and the mother be, underneath each other glasses the children underneath the children it's they'll say the colleagues the neighborhood the state the planet so as soon as the most the majority of us we are clean and ready ready to receive this to accept that we have to be clean only then we can have the new pattern inside us and build it as a society. So uh, we are all together for this. We need all to be ready to receive and to, to be clean in order to receive and to adapt the new pattern, to, this, to have a clear mind, to decide which pattern to adapt. It is, it is just like you said, yes. And it's, it's easier than it sounds. The experience I've seen in myself and many people like help, and it comes from a different places. It's not exclusively exclusive to the work I do. When people we clean ourselves, we we learn that we need less to be happy, to be content, to be healthy. Less is more, no? Like the minimalist yes. artist yes. used to say, less is more. So then we we turn into a very very fulfilling and elemental way of living. And, and that allows us to be our, our carbon footprint, if we want to bring it to those terms, reduces massively because we are more aware of how we use our resources, yes. the waste we create, 
we turn more conscious in order to make decisions on, on what kind of products we buy for our, our nourishment at home. No, if, if we change the inputs, the outputs are going to change massively. So exactly. this has to happen naturally, otherwise it's not going to be sustainable. And um, by natural means, when we clean ourselves, we stop doing things that are not, uh, they are needless. No? Sometimes people tell me, Jorge, it's been three years and I've, I've seen that I've reduced so many things I used to buy in my life. And I'm just seeing it in hindsight because it was not on purpose. I just felt there was no need for that. No? That's the way to do it. Just being net, a natural agent of change. No need to do a lot of uh, noise and stress. And, you know, if it's too hard, it's not probably going to work. So it has to be very natural, very organic. Yes, very organic. I like it also, this. So this is, uh, let's uh, say to our viewers, let's tell them uh, one last uh, tip of advice. So we can start to clean from within by recognizing patterns and uh, trying to build an ecological and eco mindset, let's say something like that. You can help me with this. And I can hear the last, uh, give the last words to you, the last quote or, what, how you feel about to help and support the people. Just one advice from where to start. One point. The, the, best, the best place at the moment to start is within ourselves. So we have to be very mindful of how, how the quality of our life is being at this moment and how that has to reflect on our world around. Yes. Our world around is a reflection of our own inner self. So if, if you were living in a, in a stressful, fast, conflicting world around, we need to pay attention to what's, how, how this, this came to be. The question exactly. would be, you know, how does this, where, where this, do, do this, does this come from? Does this come from? And to begin a self exploration on why is it that we do what, what we do. I think that's the best uh, way to begin to quiet the mind by, uh, by, by courageous uh, self inquiry. Yes, courageous. We are, we are too focused in the outside. We need to look inside ourselves, and that is very courageous. And we, we need to be courageous in this, these yes. stages of, of the present uh, times. Exactly. We need to be courageous. So I, I keep this look within and uh, what we see within, we have to be aware that uh, the reflection of the external, the external is the reflection of the internal. So we start looking in within and uh, let's uh, courageous all start doing this. So thank you, Jorge. Roxanne, thank you very much. And uh, greetings to everybody in the screen. It's been a pleasure and an honor to share a bit of my work. Thank you.